um, here for, um, for a company called Deliver. Um, we're a small little startup based out of Phoenix. Um, this is my first year at SaltConf. Um, my coworker Matt Johnson is sitting in the front row. Um, he's promised not to heckle me too bad. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about our experience uh, using Rancher, uh, using it as our orchestration tool uh, to spin up containers, um, and how we uh, integrated it with uh, our, our salt integration that we use on a daily basis. Um, so just give you an overview. Uh, just going to start a little bit, give you a um, uh, little bit of information about uh, what Deliver is and who we are. Um, kind of show, um, demonstrate how we uh, use Salt day to day. Um, then kind of go into our journey into containers and how we implemented that. And then how we used the uh, Salt custom modules to uh, sort of bridge those gaps together. And then uh, just give a little bit of um, highlights about uh, more stuff that we're going to do with custom modules in the future. Um, so just a quick uh, disclaimer, even though the, the topic of this, of this presentation is about Rancher and Salt specifically, um, for those of you guys who aren't using Rancher, um, the topic actually is more about using Salt modules, using the tools that you already have to kind of bridge those operational gaps for um, uh, integrating things to make it more smooth. So a little bit about Deliver. Um, essentially, Deliver, um, we monitor and optimize uh, CDN selections for um, our video streaming customers. Um, so the, be uh, the best way to think about it is uh, think of us like Waze or Google Maps for um, uh, CDN selection. So we um, have a lot of secret sauce that uh, helps our customers get the right CDN for video delivery, uh, right transit provider, right geolocation, things like that, kind of like a load balancer. Um, so we were founded in 2014. And I said, we're a small startup of about 20 employees. And we're an even smaller operations team of about five guys. Uh, we run a global uh, multi-data multi center infrastructure in North America and Europe. And we have some additional infrastructure in AWS. Uh, and naturally, since we're here, we use Salt a lot. So we use Salt for just about everything. We use it for our application deployments and all of our upgrades. Uh, we use it for our config files using Jinja and pillar variables. Uh, we deploy lots of AWS components uh, like lambdas, um, EC2 instances, things like that. And then we pretty much use it to just automate everything that we can. It's the core of everything we do. Um, so we usually, everything that we want to put out in our infrastructure usually starts with salt. And so this is just kind of like a small uh, snapshot of all of our salt states that we have out there. Um, we've got one for pretty much everything in our infrastructure. So this list is kind of ever growing. So uh, last year, we uh, wanted to uh, get with the future and start using containers, because um, we were having lots of uh, dependency issues. Um, all kinds of deployment problems. Uh, we were having Java dependency conflicts, one developer using one version, another using another. Um, we started to branch out and use different development frameworks. Um, a couple of our uh, developers started using Golang, um, which we found challenging to get set up uh, for a development environment. We had ports and all sorts of resources stepping on each other, um, and we were tied to our hardware. We most at the, at previously we mostly used bare metal for all of our all of our infrastructure, and so we were pretty much tied to that. We couldn't really branch out too much into the cloud. So Docker kind of solves these problems. That's kind of what it's there for. Um, but it wasn't enough to just run Docker run everywhere. Um, we needed an orchestrator. So uh, we came up with a list of criteria that uh, we wanted uh, to implement it with. The first one was we had to be able to use our existing data variables and secrets. Um, since we already had all this data sitting in salt and pillar, we didn't want to have to duplicate any of it. Uh, number two, it had to be easy to use. Since we were new to Docker and containers, um, it had to be simple to use right out of the box. Uh, we didn't want to have to invest months of time trying to get an orchestration tool to work. Um, it had to be portable. Like I said, since we were tied to our bare metal hardware um, and a couple of EC2 instances we had out there, uh, we wanted to kind of branch out, potentially look at like a Google Compute or Azure, things like that. Um, we wanted to maintain control of all of our hosts. So this kind of eliminated services like Fargate, um, where you kind of just throw your containers out to uh, AWS and, and let them manage your hosts. Uh, we weren't 
quite at a point where we wanted to sacrifice that SSH access. So we needed something uh, to maintain control of that. And we currently do that right now with Salt. Um, we have Salt manage our SSH and uh, user login for us. And finally, we didn't want to even start down the Kubernetes path, just because uh, we, we tend to like things uncomplicated, and Kubernetes was just too complicated for us. So as you can imagine, uh, I'm sure some of you have experienced this, once you start uh, Googling and researching different ways you can deploy Docker, there's hundreds of them out there. So we kind of quickly became overwhelmed with just how many options there were. Um, so we eventually just had to pick one, so we tried a couple of them, and eventually we settled on Rancher. Um, the, the reason we picked it is it just had several features that we liked, and um, kind of one point, uh, lesson learned um, that I wanted to highlight is that if you're kind of feeling burdened and overwhelmed by the hundreds of choices out there, um, if you're able to in your company, just pick one. Just start with one, and you can always go back to the drawing board later if, if you need to. So, um, do any you guys use Rancher out there? Just curious. A couple? Okay, cool. Um, so, at Deliver, we use Rancher 1.6. Um, there's a Rancher 2 uh, out there right now, but we use 1.6. Uh, it's kind of similar to Docker Swarm. It just leverages uh, Docker Compose files and Rancher Compose files. Um, it uses what's called a, a cattle orchestrator. Um, has a pretty wide catalog of pre-configured services. Has a built-in HA proxy load balancer. It's got some really cool features. Uh, we can spin up hosts in various cloud environments if we like. So again, that, that takes us away from our, uh, or that gets us to our hardware agnostic level where we can put these things anywhere. Uh, it has a well-organized, simple UI, which was excellent for us since we were just getting started with all this. And um, speaking to its or organization, it worked well for um, how we wanted to organize our, our stacks of, of containers. So the way that we set it up was uh, our applications were organized by stacks, and then each microservice or container uh, is called a service. So uh, on the right-hand side, you can kind of, this is like a snapshot of what we have in Rancher right now. Um, the AMS is the application, kind of like the global application, and then all of the um, four containers on there kind of collectively make up that application. And we're able to separate out our hosts by uh, environment. So we have a lab, staging, and a prod environment, and we're able to separate our hosts. Rancher makes it super easy to separate all that out. And like I said, the Rancher 2.0 is out there right now. Um, it's essentially a nice wrapper for Kubernetes. Um, so we're, we're looking at it because we know it's, it's inevitable. All right, so we picked Rancher. Now what do we do? So now we have these two environments. We've got Rancher for our containers, Salt for everything else. Um, we didn't like that. We didn't want to have a dual workflow. Um, so we kind of just listed out pros and cons of both. Uh, Rancher, it had a nice GUI, uh, made it super easy for us to kind of get started down this path. We could do like one-click upgrades, one-click deployments, all, again, all through a GUI. Um, it has a CLI that we could easily have automated, kind of wrap it into a shell script or something like that. But uh, we would have had to duplicate a lot of data. Since we already had a lot of secrets, uh, a lot of variables in Pillar, we would have had to duplicate that somewhere else in Rancher. Um, and if we let Rancher spin up the hosts for us, um, we wouldn't necessarily lose SSH access to those, uh, but it just would have been an extra step to try and get to them easily. Um, and like I said, we would have had separated workflows. So we would have had to have one person or one team kind of on the rancher side, and then the rest of our operations team using salt. And we just didn't really want to do that. On the salt side, we could have just gone all salt, and um, salt's got some really good Docker modules out there that probably could have replaced rancher. Um, all of our data is already there. We use it every day. Um, kind of would, would have made sense to just go that route. Um, we can spin up cloud hosts with uh, Salt Cloud and have complete control, and we already do that. Um, but since we use the open source version of Salt, uh, we don't have that nice pane of glass for everything. We would have lost that nice GUI that shows us all of our containers. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, we really just like Rancher. Uh, we just had a good experience with it and didn't want to sacrifice it. Um, because of these problems. So there had to be a solution, and um, Matt was actually the one who suggested that we should look at just writing a custom module. 
Now, at the time, that seemed really daunting because I had no idea what it was. Um, and salt seemed to work so perfectly, I didn't want to mess it up. Um, but it worked. We were able to write a, uh, just a regular salt Python custom module and able to bridge these two applications together. So um, just a little bit about salt modules. Um, if some of you guys haven't written them before, before um, documentation is actually pretty accurate. They're really easy to write. They're essentially just Python scripts that you can call via your salt command. Um, you can pretty much use any Python module that's out there, like ones that you can install from pip. Um, and you can integrate those directly into your, uh, into your salt module. You can, what we found super handy was you can cross call other salt modules, um, <coughs> like command run or state apply. That way you don't have to make any complex API calls. You just call what you already use, what you already know. And all of your data is already there. Um, so you can leverage your grains that you have assigned to your hosts, uh, all your pillar values, um, and, you know, et cetera. And you can specify different outputs for different functions, um, which is a future project uh, that I'm going to show you at the end of this uh, slides. Um, so it solved pretty much the, that big operations gap between Rancher and Salt that we had. Our cloud host could be managed by Salt. <coughs> Excuse me. We could retain uh, full access to those hosts with our SSH keys. We use Salt Cloud for that. Um, our environment variables, uh, sorry, our environment variables could be controlled with Pillar um, using Jinja variables, kind of the way they do in config files right now. Um, which means we didn't have to duplicate any data, um, which made it super handy for us. And our workflow uh, would be kind of what we were used to already. Um, like I said, since we didn't want to have separate workflows, you know, one person working on this, one person on that, uh, if our operations team already knows how to use salt, they could be able to spin up uh, containers in Rancher pretty easily using a knowledge that they already know. And we could have the best of both worlds. We could still have that nice pane of glass that Rancher gives us, and if we wanted to, uh, we could use the GUI, those nice one-click deployments were still an option if we needed it. So this is what we wrote. Um, it's basically just a Python script that wraps the uh, Rancher CLI uh, into a salt module. So uh, we put it out there for people to, people to look at, people to use, since we couldn't find anything like this. Um, we just decided to write it ourselves, And it actually turns out it's pretty easy. It's just Python. All right, I'm gonna attempt a demo, and I pre-recorded everything because I didn't want to rely on the Wi-Fi, so we'll see how this goes. <coughs> so um, for this demo, I had one of our developers kind of just write up a simple Spring Boot Hello World application. Um, this is kind of, uh, uh, we were writing a lot of Java Spring Boot applications, so this will be kind of a uh, simpler version of kind of what we're doing now. Uh, in production. So I have this uh, Spring Boot app that I need to deploy into a Rancher environment. And for this example, I'm going to deploy it to uh, our lab. So um, because we have uh, separate environments, um, we would have like certain like uh, RDS instances that these containers would have to point to, uh, different AWS secrets that might need to go out. Um, so we separated those out by different uh, application properties that we just labeled dash lab, dash staging, dash prod. So if we look at our uh, Docker compose file that we're going to have our module execute, or our salt module execute on Rancher, um, you can see we assign Jinja variables kind of like we do in our configs. And in this example, I set uh, the uh, tag version for Docker as a variable, I'll explain why in a minute. And then I also set, since I want to deploy this to lab, I want to make sure it gets the right properties file for lab. So I set the environment as a Jinja variable too. And then this is uh, our, our uh, lab state for pillar. Um, as you can see, we have the pillar variable environment set as lab. <coughs> so I'm on the salt master. I have my Docker Compose and my Rancher Compose files loaded. Um, for this, uh, how we have it set up is we have our Docker Compose and Rancher Compose files in our salt file root. Um, that's how we have it hard-coded in the salt module. 
but you could easily tweak it to have them somewhere else. Um, so we've got our files here, that Docker Compose file that I just showed you. And then we just call the module. So the syntax that we assigned to it was, uh, in this example, I'm just using salt call. Um, but we used to do salt call uh, rancher.stack and then the stack name. And then what it'll do here, hopefully that's not too small for you guys to see, is uh, so on the left, I'm on my, or on the right, I'm on my salt master, calling pseudo salt call rancher.stack and then salt comp demo. Then on the left is our rancher environment. That stack should start populating and those containers should deploy. Cool. Pretty easy. I'll let it run again so you can. So just to verify that it works, um, we can see our stack, is, a stack and containers are deployed into our lab environment. <coughs> the uh, tag version for the container defaulted to latest. Um, I'll, I'll explain why here in a second. And then kind of going deep into the uh, properties of the container, we can see that based on that pillar variable, we got the right properties file for our container. And then applications running. So now we need, now that we have this stack out there, um, let's say we want to upgrade it. So we've got all these tags out there, and uh, we want to upgrade it to the stable version. Pop that into the lab. We can do that with our salt module too. So the syntax that we wrote kind of looks like this. Um, instead of doing rancher.stack, we would do rancher.upgrade. We would call the stack name and a container name, or the service name. And then additionally, we could either leave the tag version blank, and it'll default to latest, or we, if we want to assign a specific uh, tag number, we just pop it at the end of the command here. So in this case, we're doing salt comp demo is the stack name, let me check it right there. The service is hello world, and the tag version is stable. And here we go, and this is, how, this is it in action. So again, we call it pseudo salt call rancher.upgrade. Salt comp demo is the stack name. Hello world is the container name. Stable is the tag that we want. And then on the left, you'll see the latest disappear and go as stable. Let that run again. So here we go. We've got a upgraded stack in Rancher. Um, we've got it now on a stable version. I am way behind on my notes. One second. And there we go. Now the config file changed because we got a stable version, and now we're a stable lab config. So those are just two examples that, that I kind of wanted to highlight. Those are kind of like the main core features of this module that we use. <coughs> um, these are just some other uh, exam pillar, va pillar variables you could throw into your Docker Compose file. Um, this is uh, one of our actual um, containers that we have out there called Watcher Agent. Um, again, we assign the tag as a variable, uh, what kind of environment we want it in, what node we want to run it on, and we can also variableize our um, AWS uh, keys and secret keys. Um, some other functions that we have uh, that we put into this custom module. Um, you can upgrade the entire stack if you wanted to, instead of doing one container at a time. Um, if you're brave enough to do the whole entire stack, you just plop upgrade at the end of your rancher stack command. You can do rollbacks and confirmation. That's one of the neat features about rancher, is um, it'll kind of do a blue-green deployment. Um, so it'll shut down your old container, spawn up a new one. If you like it, you can pop confirm at the end of your command. It'll delete the old one, keep your new one up. Or you can roll it back uh, pretty easily. Um, similar to Docker PS, you can run rancher.containers. 
and that, that'll display uh, on your Salt Master all of your containers running across all of your environments. And um, because it's a Python script, uh, you can do uh, Jinja for loops, which keeps your Docker Compose files short and sweet if you have a lot of containers uh, that are similar to, or containers that are similar to each other, um, so you don't have like a 100 line uh, Docker Compose file. Uh, so this is an example workflow that uh, we're currently using right now in prod. Um, obviously, we start with a pull request for any code changes. We have Jenkins uh, build our Docker image for us, and we have Jenkins assigned a uh, build number for us uh, as its tag. We have that container pushed to Docker Hub as our registry, and then from our salt master, we run, uh, we use our custom module uh, to upgrade it. Um, so, some of the lessons that we learned throughout this process, um, first and foremost, uh, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Um, you uh, kind of already have all of these tools already at your fingertips, and kind of the point of this presentation I want to highlight is that you can use Salt. Um, uh, you can use Salt, there's probably a lot of features in Salt that you're not really using. Um, so, read through that documentation. Um, you know, kind of think outside the box a little bit. Um, you can think of salt like the glue that brings everything together. So in this instance, we had two, uh, two deployment environments uh, that we didn't want to have separated, so we were able to bridge those gaps uh, using salt custom modules. Uh, I'm not a developer, and um, with, within an hour, I was able to get uh, the simple Python module, uh, just kind of like a working blueprint of it. So. Um, if you're afraid of writing code, don't be, because they're super easy to get started. If you know how to use salt, you're kind of already halfway there. Um, at the end of the day, just, just do something. Um, this, kind of, uh, uh, this kind of attitude sort of helped us when we were starting our container rollout. Um, since we had tons of options to work with, um, and like I said, since we already had salt, um, we just decided, all right, we're gonna go with Rancher and then figure out a way to make it work with salt. And then um, share what you did. That's why I came here to, to talk to you guys about it, um, because we couldn't find any solution out there that was kind of prepackaged and nice, ready to go for us. Um, so we wrote it and then wanted to share it with everybody. So um, moving forward, uh, we decided to uh, expand uh, and we'll start writing some more custom modules. Uh, also start exploring some more formatters salt formatters and salt runners. Um, so this is just an example of what we're working on right now. Um, on the left is probably something you've seen before. Um, when you run a high state, you get a lot of this uh, spam that says like result clean. Um, some of it you just like grep out, you don't need to see. Um, we got tired of piping this output and grepping all the garbage out that we didn't need. So we decided to write uh, some custom modules and some custom formatters to clean this up for us. So we want to turn that into what you see on the right. Um, basically just a ni nice, short and sweet abbreviation. If nothing changed, all we needed to see is no changes. And so that's the actual output of a uh, config push that we've done in lab. So I blasted through that because I'm really anxious to get to the party and I talk really fast. So we've got a lot of time to spare. Um, if you guys have any questions, let's, uh, yeah, please let me know. Oh, okay. So um, uh, the question was like, what data did we want to pipe in to um, pipe into Rancher and not have to duplicate? Um, so a lot of that is like uh, environment variables, like the actual environment name, um, like I said, AWS keys, um, database URLs. Um, since we already had all of that into our pillar file, um, 
we leverage the salt custom module to just grab that from that pillar variable and then sub it onto the Docker compose file and push that out to Rancher. So um, it's basically all, whatever information, so like if you want to use this, it's whatever information you already have in your pillar variable, in your pillar states, um, you could pipe that in to Rancher that way. Um, what, what do you mean by, sorry, what do you mean by, by rolling updates? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So um, that feature is actually part of Rancher itself. Uh, we didn't put that into our module. Um, uh, the way you can either do it is you can assign like a blue-green style deployment where you can have half your stack upgrade, leave the other half as the old one. Um, or you can schedule them, like if you have 10 containers of the same one, uh, you can tell Rancher, like, do two at a time. Um, and then uh, the, the load balancer that they have, baked, they're the one that we have, the one, um, the load balancer that's baked into it um, has enough knowledge to know that if it's being upgraded, don't route that request to this container. Go for the new one. Yeah, so we, yeah, uh, we are using the cattle orchestration. Um, and essentially, the, the module that we wrote um, is just a wrapper for the Rancher CLI, which integrates with, with the cattle API. Um, so basically, we have the Rancher CLI installed on our Salt Master, and then we use uh, the custom module to integrate with that. Essentially, running a command run on our Salt Master to call the Rancher CLI. Um, yeah, it's a it's a big change. Um, we we installed it on like a like a dev playground, um, and our 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 module that we wrote absolutely doesn't work with it, so we would have to completely refactor it. Um, uh, it's a pretty big change, um, and uh, so at, at the time, since we wanted to get some containers out to prod, didn't even want to go down that path. And since Rancher 1.6 will be supported for quite some time, we just decided to go with that. Thank you guys, appreciate it.